Western Coolant Coke No. 1 is a Canadian 46010 wheeler. It is a relatively small locomotive, but it is a pretty crew-friendly one too. A locomotive that looks primitive, No. 1's design dates as early as the late 1880s, first created by a Pittsburgh locomotive works. By the turn of the 20th century though, larger locomotives were being introduced, causing the 1880s design to become obsolete, and a lot of remaining locomotives of this design fell into the hands of locomotive dealerships in Canada. However, when Canada's third transcontinental network was under construction, a small and slow-paced locomotive was needed to assist with the construction. The Montreal Locomotive Works built 15 locomotives that were similar to the 1880s Pittsburgh design, except their boilers were superheated and their fireboxes were much larger, thus creating a larger boiler pressure and a higher tractive effort. This design became so successful and well liked by crews that throughout the first half of the 1910s, other small Canadian companies worked locomotives of the same design in order to save designing and construction costs. Number 1 here was built in December 1913 for the Western Coal and Coke Company, and it was initially used for hauling coal trains throughout Beaver Mines, Alberta. The Western Coal and Coke Company eventually changed its name to the Royalties Oil and Share Corporation and in 1935, it merged with Leithbridge Collieries Limited. Unfortunately, not very much is known about Number One's revenue career, but it is safe to assume that it was a mostly uneventful one. Number One pulled its last revenue freight train at Playa Mi, Alberta in 1964. Subsequently, Number One was purchased by a group from the Mid-Continent Railway Museum and it arrived in North Freedom, Wisconsin on two flat cars in October 1965. Museum employees restored Number One to operating condition by the 1970 operating season. And because crews liked working with the locomotive so much, it became one of their museum's main steam stars on their tourist trackage, which lied between North Freedom and Rattlesnake Station near LaRue. Number one also occasionally performed some triple headers with its running mates, including Warren and Ottawa Valley Number no. One, Dardanelle and Russellville Number no. Nine, and of course Chicago and Northwestern Number no. 1385. In 1991, Number no. One's original wooden cab became completely worn out, and it was subsequently replaced with a brand new one made from scratch. However, the following year, 1992. Number one would be formally retired from service after firebox problems sidelined it. Throughout the next three decades, number one has sat in disassembled condition on the Mid-Continent Railway Museum's property. With some help from outside organizations, like the Tennessee Valley Borough Museum, crews have reworked and replaced various parts of the boiler, including the firebox, the smoke box, the flues, the tubes, the tube sheets, the sables, and bits of the boiler barrel. They also refabricated the driving wheels, sandblasted the frame, and remade the cowcatcher from scratch. As of 2022, or at least at the time of making this video anyway, number one is still sitting disassembled inside the museum's locomotive shops. Museum crews are hoping to get number one up and running again at least one day, but for their time being, the locomotive's rebuild is pretty much on hold, and it will resume after the rebuild on number 1385 is completed. Number one still stands as the only Canadian-built steam locomotive in the Mid-Continent Railway Museum's collection, and it is the only Canadian-built steam locomotive that is preserved in the United States, not having served the Canadian Pacific or Canadian National Railways before. Speaking of the Canadian National, there is at least one preserved locomotive out there that's similar in design to Western Coin Coke Number no. One, that being F1 Class Number no. 1009 at the New Brunswick Railway Museum. 